<clears throat> hey everybody, it's Sophia Marco, Dish Out on the Movies. And today I'm doing my review of Season 3 of Monk. Probably one of my favorite TV shows, or I should say modern TV shows, that I never saw when it was, when it was on, but I have been watching it after uh, hearing about it from Marco and seeing a few sample Christmas episodes. I have been watching it, and I'm done well, with season three. I'm what going what are your other favorite TV shows? Blue Bloods? I like Andy Griffith. Blue Bloods, and, uh, Walker, Texas Ranger, Walking Dead. I don't know Dead. why Marco is saying all this stuff. I haven't watched any TV shows in all a while. All My Children. I used to like... Uh, you loved All My Children. I, looked, I used to like NCIS, but I stopped watching that, and I watched Survivor, but I don't watch that anymore. And, um, well, isn't it safe to say like reality shows are kind of out unless they're like cooking shows? I don't like, know. Like, I about think that. reality shows are just so like tired now because I don't they're, know. Survivor's been on they're quite so a fake. long, long time. They're so fake, though, and the people that go on them are so awful. They're like, they're awful types of people. Well, I don't like the way, um, like those people on Chopped, that cooking show. Remember yeah, that's that? a cooking show. You just said well, you think the other... The majority of cooking shows, though, are pretty good. Like <laughs> Hell's Kitchen, Master Chef. You know, I don't think Hell's Kitchen is that great because too many people smoke, and I don't know how they can cook and taste their food effectively if they smoke as much as they show them to be smoking because that ruins your taste. They should get Monk to judge a, TV, to, to judge a cooking show. Well, I don't know That'd about that. That'd be pretty that. funny. But anyway, and this this season was June. It went from June eighteenth, two thousand and four, to March fourth, two thousand and five. It was a total of sixteen episodes. And the biggest change was they changed a major character, uh, Monk's nurse and assistant Sharona, left the show, and. Um, she got yeah. replaced with... She was replaced who? by another girl. What's her name? Her name was Natalie. Ooh. And she... And Sharona had had a son and was a single parent. And Natalie has a daughter. And she's a and single she's parent, a single too. Parent. And I guess they'd have to be a single parent in order to be with him and holding his hand all the time. But apparently, Marco read that she had asked for Sharona, the woman who played Sharona, had asked for a salary increase, which was kind of ironic since during the show, on multiple episodes, she would always complain about getting paid. Yeah. <laughs> and so, uh, anyway, they, that as the actress, uh, was upset because they didn't increase her salary. Now he read this. I haven't read it, but I believe it. I mean, I've heard similar complaints. You know during the years from different people so anyway i um i watched all the episodes so it's a couple of times and i gave as far as like a letter grade out of the 16 episodes i gave three a's uh three c's and 10 b's of some form like b plus b or b minus and uh my I'll, <clears throat> I rank them too, which you know I I know how millennials love to rank things. I didn't ask you to rank especially anything. Especially Marco. I didn't ask you to rank and anything. And my least favorite episode was uh, the election. If they, what, what they do is they put Mr. Monk and the Mr. Monk and the every almost every episode is like that's the Mr. title. Mr. Monk. In the rankings. <laughs> yeah. So, and the reason, I just didn't care for it. It just didn't. I didn't like it either. It just didn't mean much to me. I think what happened was Natalie was upset. Her daughter's school, I think, was closing. And she wanted to run for election in, uh, as somebody who could do something about that, which I'm not really sure she could, whether she was elected or not. So, um, I just didn't care for it. I didn't think, and, and it was, 
Well, it wasn't the last episode, but it just wasn't. I, I just didn't care for and it. Natalie's character, she does this a lot where she inserts herself into situations that really, like, she's not going to do very much. And she's kind of like a whiner sometimes. Yeah, man. Oh, and, well, let me. The story with her is that her husband was in the military and didn't he get killed? And so that yeah, that's why she's a single parent. They didn't they didn't get a divorce and he's out there somewhere being <laughs> bad. He he actually passed away. He was killed. So, um I just wanted to say that. Anyway, that was my least favorite and I just can't tell you it's there's not much to tell about. It's not even worth it cuz it just wasn't that good. I I just didn't care for it, but the thing is, the quality of this series is so good that, I mean, all I can, the least grade I can give it is a C, or like a C minus, which is pretty good considering some of the crap we've been watching in the last couple of years. On, like what, For Sophie? these series, like uh, Your, uh, Better Call Better Saul, Call Saul. Uh, <laughs> how they could ruin their uh, show like they did. Yeah. Okay, my next episode, that uh, number 15, is Mr. Monk Gets Fired. Now, oh, the, the best part about this, oh, the, the, it was very frustrating oh. to watch. One was, he wasn't entirely innocent. And his zeal to clean, you know, you know, he's very, like, everything's got to be perfect. He's very um, OC, OCD, I guess that is. And he... They were at the coroner's office, I believe, and he was uh, cleaning the computer keys and he wiped out all their files, their case files, and that pissed off the police commissioner and they and he fired him and he didn't want him anywhere near the case. And there was a couple of other instances too. Uh, that It wasn't as bad as that, but he just didn't, He I, it seemed like he didn't like them. And, to me, all that part, I was frustrated with that, where he wiped the computer keys, and it's like, you just don't mess with somebody else's computer. I don't care how OCD you are. Yeah, all he had to do was say, hey, your computer keyboard is really dirty. Can right. you please clean it? And they could have shut and, off a computer and then yeah. cleaned it. And but, it's it's also a question of like you know he's he he knows this equipment you know he he's not an idiot right completely so you'd think that he would at least turn off the computer or yeah, something yeah he could have but it just so and then the 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 attitude of the police commissioner and then um, was I couldn't stand it and so it was very frustrating. For both reasons. It's a for, negative episode. Yeah, it is very negative. The only but good thing was at the end yeah. was uh, the thing is somebody, uh, his hair, the commissioner had a uh, toupee on. But you really couldn't, it was very well put on. Except, I don't know, that oh, that was all fake. I bet he's not really bald. But um, um, what happened was a person who was murdered, a woman... It had really long hair. She cut it. She took it to this place. Well, they made wigs and they made this toupee. And so the bad guy, her husband, uh, he was trying to constantly, like, take his, take the commissioner's hat. And they were like, "What's going on with this person? He keeps taking my hat." And the thing is, he wanted that toupee because it was the last thing he had, he had compulsively cleaned the house of any blood and. Any anything that he had done that was wrong. Yeah, because when he at the beginning of the episode, the guy killed this woman and just blood squirted everywhere because he like sawed her body into pieces. That's right. And it was like, ooh, gross. The villains on this show are pretty bad. Yes, they are. I mean, they are really. It isn't that they're <laughs> evil. They're just you just don't like them. They're just dislikable people. But anyway, so. Uh, but what happened was, you know, Monk figured this out because he's really good at figuring, because he, he's really good at picking, looking at details, because of course this OCD thing is a detail thing. So anyway, um, he swears up and down the guy's wearing a toupee. Well, the commissioner won't admit it. Well, she really just got fed up. She jumps on the police commissioner's back 
and she rips that toupee off of his head. And I thought that was the funniest thing. Yeah, that was the best part it of the was whole the episode. Best part. And it happened at the end. And in fact, I watched it again just because it's so satisfying and funny, uh, that one scene. Yeah, the next, uh, number 14 is Mr. Monk versus the Cobra. Ugh. Now, the Cobra Gross. was a an action uh, ch- Chinese... Uh, or he's I don't a, know. He's uh, an action Chinese, Chinese warrior ninja it's a Chinese person who warrior. you know, like a Bruce Lee or Kung Fu or something, where they <laughs> who's you know, Kung they Fu? Defeat, uh, who's Kung Fu? That's another action person, and they defeat Kung the Fu? bad guys using using martial arts. But who is Kung Fu? And uh, anyway, the Cobra <laughs> is the person, and they and they. They think he's still alive, but it ends up as a small-time criminal. And Monk, actually, the best part of the episode, that's, that's why I mean I can't really give anything below a C, because if even if I don't care for the mystery, it isn't intriguing, and it's kind of boring, and it's just, eh. Well, who is um, Kung Fu? That's another action person. No, that's not. Yes, Sophie. it is. You want to make a bet? Kung, Look it up. Kung Fu is a style of fighting. That's not the name of a person. That's a fighting style. Okay. It's the guy who played David Carradine. I think that's who David it was. David Carradine is Kung anyway, Fu. Yeah, well, oh. Look it up. Anyway, um, now Marco is getting me off track. So what happens is the bad guy knocks Monk out with a shovel and he buries him. Alive. Alive. And so they have to find him. And it He's dreaming or visualizing or Trudy, his wife, who who was killed in a car bomb, and she's helping him try to stay alive or whatever as a ghost. And um, and this is something we haven't talked about. Wouldn't you agree with me that Jan from The Office is not convincing at all as this, like, nice woman, Trudy? No, I don't like, agree with that. She's so, like... She was know, horrible in the office. So I, I and, remember that. And after I've seen her in the office, I'll never be able to take her seriously as, like, a nice person. Because well, she's she was just so, the opposite in this show. She, the look... She just has this look. Like, she's just... Yeah. Like, Ernest Borgenine, before he did Marty, you know, he just had that villainous quality. And it's the same with her. That she just has this... Yeah. Well, anyway, it's, Amber Heard look. I don't think I've seen very many um, TV shows, like a series, where someone's been buried alive. There have been a couple of movies, and where they didn't make it out. And so, anyway, they found him just in time. Well, American Horror Story season three. Oh yeah, that's true. But I was thinking of that those European. Uh, and then they made an American version of that one. I can't think of the name of that movie. I'm thinking of that movie, and uh, it was ew, awful, very depressing. Okay, I'm going to move along. A 13 is Mr. Monk and the Blackout. Um, you know, I just, I, it, I gave it a B minus, but because. Um, but it was really bizarre. The thing is, the bad guy was somebody who they, he faked his death years ago, and he was at a Willie Nelson concert or something, and the woman he was with t- took off his disguise. He had kind of like glasses and a hat, and you could see him, and he actually, he was so smart, he could go to the power station and put a bomb, make a bomb, and put it on... Uh, certain things on the on the power grid and knock out power so people couldn't watch the show it was that was aired on TV with Willie Nelson because it would show him and he did it twice and I, it, to me it's a, a little bit far-fetched and uh, but just the fact that Monk uh, figured it out and then there was this woman who was interested in him and he wouldn't go in the elevator because it didn't it wasn't level with the floor. It was like a little below. <laughs> and he said it was broken, and she said it wasn't. And they had to 
climb, I don't know, it was more than 32 flights, I think, the top. And by the time they got there, for because they went out to dinner. He actually took her out to dinner, uh, albeit, uh, you know, he didn't really want to do it. But he, he decided to do it. And um, by the time they got there, the reservation was gone because it took them 35 minutes to climb over 32 flights of steps. It was frustrating, too, because yeah. it felt like... Just like in season one, when he had that love interest, and then and they were perfect, and then at the end of the episode, they just sort of wrote her off the show, and it's like it, it's like whenever he gets some sort of a person, like a new person or something, they just find an excuse to get rid of them. So well, I think they, they play like to, to play this Trudy thing, where she yeah. pops up every so often yeah. as a like a ghost or he's thinking about her or something and to use as part of the story and it's just too uh tear jerking material that they want to it's, put in it's so, not though no it's it's really not it's like just uh mid mid level at best okay I mean, she's dead right okay i move along <laughs> she to exploded number, mis, number 12 is mr monk meets the godfather i can't believe how high you have the, know, the goldfish really... and this one like these two to me are some of the worst ones it, it was uh it was okay sharona what happens is well there's this shooting in this barber shop and this godfather person thinks it could be like a uh, another gang, a rival gang, but he wants to make sure because he doesn't want to start some big thing, which is a good thing. And he hears Monk is a really good detective. He hires him. And so um, it ends up being something that has nothing to do with any of the gangs at all. It's about somebody who took money from the San Francisco Federal uh, Mint and which is interesting because you hear about the Denver Mint, the San Francisco Mint, because on like Nichols, whatever they have the initials at the bottom, S, think like S F or N D, and um, so it's interesting that this was about the uh, San Francisco Mint. Well, I like the in, Mint. The, the, I mean, I like the mystery. The, yeah, you the, like it the is. Mystery. Yeah. That, well, that's what I said. It was very the different. Nobody ever good. has a mystery about any of the mints. The problem with the episode was everything around the mystery. Yeah. It, it, but so, um, but a guy from the mint who actually works at the mint took, and they have had this. They've had this with stamps. They've had this with coins where they do misprints, and the misprints actually can fetch a lot, a lot of money. And uh, I've seen this with stamps especially. And there were some misprints of these, I think they were pennies, or yeah, I think it might've been pennies. And um, I don't know if he took them and then he accidentally put them in the gumball machine in the barber shop. And he, he was trying to steal the, barber, uh, the machine, the gumball machine. And then they were trying to stop him and he just shot, he shot everybody up, which was kind of weird and not, it, it just didn't match the uh, it, it's such a low level criminal uh, you know and he was actually just stealing he was going to turn them in and get money which I don't know how he could do because I think he'd get caught right away and just now I'm thinking about is, eh, if I you, probably shouldn't have rated it that high but I think the worst thing really that's not good he, I, but he could give it to somebody illegal like it, you know there, there's this uh, video game called uh, Red Dead Redemption 2 and you can like steal people's things and but you can't sell them to stores obviously you just sell them to these fencers yeah and, that's you know, true fencer stuff they have those people yeah, so. I, I still, but one of the worst things was Sharon is a single mother she's always talking about her son she's she the wants worst. to protect her son well she, I I don't know, I think if he was the grandson of the godfather, started schmoozing her, and of course, I mean, they're real good at that because they end up killing you, screwing you over, stealing, whatever, but he was a schmooze, and he schmoozed her, and so she, like, 
and he they also had a record he had had two indictments against him which is not well, it doesn't that matter it, if you're associated with the mafia then why would somebody want to date you yeah and so all? she was like oh well, that doesn't matter <laughs> and i mean and her attitude was so stupid and then it and took yeah. it randy who is the assistant to the captain the police captain uh had they had been monitoring their conversations, the mob, mob's conversations, and it, he heard the uh, guy, they called him, was it Fat Tony or something? Yeah, they'd make that joke <clears throat> the whole episode. Yeah, like and it about, got old. Uh, he's, he's not fat, though, but they call him Fat Tony. He lost and, weight. And it's like, the, the joke was funny once, but yeah. to just keep on joking about that the whole episode... Well, anyway, he had been schmoozing her, but he laughed about it. He was laughing about it on tape. Well, he should. I mean, she just sleeps with anyone who walks. Yeah, well, yeah, well yeah, it was just... Like, she's the worst he, girlfriend. She's the worst mother. He made fun of her. She's and the she, worst her assistant. Randy played it for her, and so she realized that he yeah. he uh, fooled her. And she's okay. like, she she doesn't really admit that she's wrong very much either. Right. She's just kind of like, eh, I'll sleep with the next person that comes by as well. Okay, in my the next num- episode. My number eleven is Mr. Monk takes his medicine. Oh. And it kind of makes me. It. I used to work for a mental health clinic, and. It's, it makes me see this in a certain light, which I wish I would have known about before, because we have two psychiatrists, three psychiatrists on staff, and uh, they love to prescribe medicine. And so Mr. Monk was really upset with himself. He was sick of being afraid and so OCD. He didn't like it. And so uh, his psychiatrist... Uh, suggested he take this medicine he says there's really no side effects well completely changes his personality he turns him into a big fat jerk and nobody wanted to be around him and I re- the reason why i ranked this down at 11 was because i couldn't stand his behavior and but the thing is you have to give him credit he was completely different than what he usually is so it took some really good acting to act like this jerk and uh, compared to what he act, well, actually acts like. I would disagree. I thought that he was Monk Prime. Well, I didn't like it <laughs> at all. I, it was it was another... And, and the said, reason why I wanted it higher... Sharona, you're bringing me down. Yeah, Sharona, you're bringing me down. And, and guess what? That's her last episode. <laughs> right. She, she deserved it. Like, that was so satisfying. For him to just roast through the whole episode and then she leaves. <laughs> okay, my number 10 episode is Mr. Monk and the Red Herring. Ugh. And this is when the new woman assistant comes in. And they force her down your throats. They're like, she's a really good person. She is very good. She is not like Sharona. She's not a slut. She's not a bitch. She's a good person. She's good. So yeah, I, I don't really know why they call it red herring because it was because about of their a fish. fish or a herring, you know, like pickled herring. That so was like a herring. It's, no, it was it's, a real it's, herring? it's just like a double meaning. Oh, okay. It's just like a clever title, the yeah, red herring. I guess it I was. Think it's it was gay. okay. I put it at ten. I gave that one a D. He saved the. Uh, I, I believe it. He <laughs> saves this fish. Here he's got the bad guy. The bad guy's at the fell down the steps, and the fish. He was trying to. I don't know. The fish got. He, there was a moon rock involved. And of course, this is another thing where it's a valuable collector's item and would be worth a lot of money. And the guy was trying to steal it. The girl. The little girl had. They had been to the. I guess it was a children's museum and. Uh, she bought a kit for fish because she had a fish, a couple of fish, and um, it the moon rock got 
uh, stolen or something, and they put it in this kit they were going to get it, but she grabbed it up and paid for it and took it home. And so, but anyway, the bad guy went to the science fair where the little girl was displaying her fish and the, all the equipment that had the moon rock in there, although they didn't know it. And uh, anyway, Mr. Monk saves the fish because the bag that was in fell out of the guy's hand because he fell down the step. Bad guy fell down the steps. And so instead of guilt going for the bad guy, he took a fish and was trying to get it in to safety, and he does. And so, uh, anyway, it, it was uh, okay. I mean, it's I put it at number 10. It's that woman's first episode and her daughter. I thought her daughter was really nice. And Well, here is a good question, Sophie. You, has anyone ever tried to, like, crush up moon rock and snort it? No. <laughs> it's stupid. Why would anybody snort a rock? Because they could snort the moon. Oh, Jesus. Okay, my number nine is Mr. Monk gets stuck in traffic. And this was just an okay episode, too. I mean, I gave it a B. And the reason why is because I think it's a clever that they, uh, this is like a traffic jam because there's an accident or and whatever, and the, 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 the road's tied up. And we have been in plenty of these uh, when we've traveled where it was a, there was an accident, there's a long line, or it's construction that makes it worse. And, I mean, this was, was people were going to be stuck for a while. They were out there having parties and and somebody's murder, been murdered, and he figures this out. But, I mean, to figure this all out, and they're stuck in traffic, and they're just running around, like literally running around, out of their cars, trucks, whatever, on the highway. And I just thought it was clever, just because we had been in so many of these traffic jams. So, um, number eight is... Uh, Mr. Monk and the Kid, and this is like the final episode. Oh, God. And it really is... Oh, uh, it's a trash finale. It's another fair thing, because you can't... The problem with this series... They don't know how to do finales. They don't know how to do finales, so you really... This could have actually been episode 5, but it was episode 16, and yeah. I guess the biggest... The best thing about it was his interaction with this little boy and how he treated him and he took care of him and he, he did a really good job and be, you know he's very OCD he has lots of uh, fears and he did he did good and I just I thought that was really neat and that but the the rest of the episode the mystery and everything it, it was you know Weak. fair yeah very and fair fair what fair what they really should have done in my opinion I don't know if I said this in my review or not I think since Sharona left, I mean, that's the only thing of note that happened the whole season. Yeah. That Sharona left. That was the big uh, and that, story. And that wasn't even supposed to happen. So, you know, it just shows how they really don't know how to write like that. And I really think that they should have had other people as fill-in assistants. Well, and they then did. The, and then at the end of the season have a, a, a new one. Yeah, they could have done that, and they did do that in at least one episode, and, and I'm coming to that pretty soon. They did that in the office. Excuse me, sorry. That's what they did in the office when Michael left. Right, They had a bunch That's of right. fill-ins, and it was like the anticipation of who's going to get it, who's going to get it, and I thought that that was kind of cool. Okay, well, my next episode, number seven, <laughs> is the very first episode of the season. And at the end of the last season, uh, this bad guy, it's called Mr. Monk Takes Manhattan. And they traveled to New York because he was given a tip that a certain bad guy was the bomber and he might be able to tell him who the person who killed his wife. And this was, this, and it was the bomber who he knew what the, and he was dying. He was on his last I mean, really, they had him on uh, morphine or whatever, and, I mean, he was on his last leg. And he knew how he put the bomb together, what it was made from, and he... But the, the mystery was not... It was completely different. It was something else. And it was... Uh, they had an ambassador from a different country 
He was shot along with his um, aides, and uh, Mr. Muck was happened to be there. And uh, so they said if he solved this mystery, he could uh, he could talk to this guy. Even he, and he was on his last leg. But see, they needed his testimony for some big other big case. And so there's a big back and forth when he took the the chief of the. Uh, Police chief was there, and Randy went to in Sharona, of course, and it was pretty good. It was better than the last episode. I yeah. Thought. Well, the best part is the fact that they did have like a finale style scene where Monk uh, is with that guy at the end, and he's interrogating him, and I felt like, see, I'd like to see more stuff like that. Yeah. So. Uh, my well, next one is... What I, do you have to say? I mean, Safi, you got to admit, that mystery was mediocre. With it fucking was okay. Jeffrey it Dean Morgan and shit. That was kind of like, eh. Yeah, that's hard to believe. I can't even... I can't even believe that. Traffic that Jam it. had a better mystery. That was really a mystery. I mean, that was really complicated. I know. Um... <laughs> But anyway, the next one is number six, and this is Mr. Monk and the Girl Who Cried uh, Wolf. And this is kind of a weird thing because um, it was probably Sharona, and remember, this is her last season. We're getting almost to her last episode. Um, this was uh, her best, probably her best episode. And what happens, she was taking a short, like a creative writing class in the evening, in the evenings, and she'd written a short story about a uh, wife who poisoned her husband, like by putting the poison in uh, tomato soup, which somehow masked the poison or something, and killed him so she could be with her boyfriend. And um, the teacher took the idea for her story and decided to implement it in a real life and she had her boyfriend uh, haunt Sharona he had a pretend knife stuck in his chest and something in his head and everywhere she'd go this guy would show up he would show up behind people and look at her he would show up uh, by her car all over the place and uh, Niecy Nash I think that's her name was also was in her class and she t uh she took over uh Sharona's part as monk's helper because Sharona thought she was going crazy I mean she didn't know all she didn't know her teacher was doing this to her and so Nisi Nash was really good and she uh, fills in for Sharona she's funny and she's her own person she has her own way of doing things and um, and she says that Sharona has been treating you too much like a baby yeah I'm going to start treating you like a man right and <laughs> which is fun it's just funny so it was and then just Monk says don't do that <laughs> so it was uh, it was pretty good I, I liked it um, my next one is number five Mr. Monk in the panic room and Marco reminded me, I forgot that this was about a chimpanzee. Yeah, because you were going to pretend like this was a bad episode. Well, I, uh, It was pissing it, me it, off. It was better than, uh, I watched it again. I re-watched it. I watched all these like in November. And then we did uh, Horror Story, two seasons of Horror Story and uh, some movies. And, oh, I know, well, we summed up the whole year's worth Rankings. of everything. We ranked, so... Uh, I forgot, you know, even and even though I really love these episodes, I mean, it's just a good show. Um, just some of them I forgot, but this was really good. And this also was good with Sharona because she stood up uh, for the chimpanzee. They were going to kill him because they thought the chimpanzee had shot his owner. And it turned out to be the guy who put together the security system was having an affair with the guy's wife and... You know, it was a conspiracy thing. And um, so it was good because the, the, the chimpanzee was really good. I guess I'm a little wary about uh, 
episodes, if anything, with chimpanzees because of that incident that happened a few years ago in real life where somebody had ha had one of these chimpanzees and had been on TV. I don't know if it was this one. It, I, I have no idea, but it, it attacked this woman who had been taking care of it and being really good to it. I mean, really physically, because chimpanzees are strong, and it, it attacked her. I think it put her eye out. And so I, you know, I don't, I ha I'm a little wary because of, of something that happened in real life, not some fake thing. But anyway, it was a really good episode. So I, I do have a question, too. What? Uh, you know, what do you think the jail goo was? I have no idea. <laughs> Gum? <laughs> no, I it was like goo. Stuff. It was like know. clear goo. Oh, I don't know. And it's like, ooh, that somebody was like, had their head on the table and they were mm. drooling all over the table. Like, it's really <laughs> odd. Like, it... And it was that part was gross too, because you know any any time that happens, it doesn't matter if you're monk or not. Like you go somewhere in public oh, yeah. and you sit down and there's some goo. Oh God! And you're like, what the hell is that? <laughs> yeah, it's pretty gross. I I don't know. It's like it's like Casper had a had a. <laughs> Casper yeah. was starting to have diarrhea. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, my number four episode. This is my last B episode. This is Mr. Monk Goes to Vegas. Now, we, Marco and I were talking about this episode. This woman was wearing this long scarf with her. And this is Las Vegas. And I watch a uh, thrifter named uh, Thrifting Vegas. And Ugh. she talks about it getting to be like 120 degrees there. And it's, she's, I mean, she's, it's like a normal thing. Uh... And where it just gets really hot. She's in an air conditioned she building. She's in an air conditioning building, but she's, she's just wearing rich. But she's wearing this long scarf. I mean, people wear scarves, but they don't wear one that's hanging all the way down the oh, front. Sorry. Whoa. Oh, I mean, I've off. seen the fashion and I just it just doesn't but anyway, it gets stuck in the elevator, she gets like hung and they they tr they mark it down as a tragic accident. Well it ends up her husband plant her murder and uh, the mystery wasn't it wasn't that great I just don't think yeah. it was really there wasn't much to it and the thing about that I loved about the episode and so I give the mystery like a C yeah. the thing about the episode I really liked was and Randy sorry I was saying Andy he brings this book about how to gamble and <laughs> <laughs> he thinks he, he's got it made because this book is so good and he follows it to the letter. Well, he ends up losing thousands and thousands of dollars. And, he, I mean, he's going to get in trouble because he can't pay it. And so Muck, of course, because he's so OCD, he plays that game, I don't know what it is, uh, Blackjack or... Uh, uh, flap, to... Flapjack. No, it's oh, Blackjack. Uh, oh, Waffle. Well, there was... Ooh, I, I know. know what Marco's doing. I know what it is. This thing where you have to have... I can't think of it. But anyway, oh. Mr. Monk sees... Ca there's cards involved. And he's like kind of like... He's so OCD, he can remember the cards. Like a card counter, which is totally illegal in a casino. Sorry. He wins back all of Randy's money. He pays off his debt. And, of course, the, the show's over. But I just thought it was so neat, that part about Randy, because he was being so naive, and he loses all this money. He keeps looking at that stupid book, even after he's lost tons of them, I mean, thousands of dollars. He's still looking at that book, thinking it's going to help him. And it was just stupid. It is important to mention, though, that you wouldn't have gotten this story unless they went to Vegas to solve this mystery. No. Like, the mystery was just an excuse for them to go to Vegas. I guess so, because they, you're, he's right. They wouldn't have. I don't know if any, uh, I'm sure there is, but their casino, nobody associates casino with, with San Francisco. Nobody. So. They would have to go to Las Vegas. I associate you. I don't you. even know why did they go to Las Vegas. Were I, they going there for the mystery, or were they uh, going there for? I mean. I associate I you, Safi. 
I associate you with gambling. Okay, I've got my my next three, three, two, and one episodes are all A episodes. Really? They're all my favorite, and the third one was Mr. Monk and employee, an employee of the month, which is kind of weird because you know businesses do this thing where they they have an employee of the month and they get their picture and they put the they display the picture on on the wall <coughs> and. Uh, this was about a murder of an employee of the month, and he started working at the place as undercover so he could try to figure out, because they couldn't figure out what was going on, and somebody had to be on the inside. And, of course, he's so OCD. He's a perfect employee. You know, he wants everything straightened up, cleaned up, you know, perfect-looking, you know, perfectly displayed, and, of course... I think he can, does he get employee of the month one week? I don't know, but he is in, is, he's in real stiff competition with this other woman. And it turns out this other woman wants the parking spot that they get because it's over a bank. And uh, they can, do, he, she and this other guy can somehow rob the bank and load up her uh, car or, or truck or whatever it is and get away and nobody would know how that happened and um and it's all due you have to be employee of the month and then you have to get this parking spot and that's and that that's what it was all about and so it was pretty good it was just funny to see him as a store employee and because he's so ocd he's uh competes almost and she's getting frustrated the the one who has been really good at it and, close to getting it and then he comes along and he provides stiff competition for her and uh, it's it drives her crazy but uh, she gets caught because he notices uh, the back of her vehicle is heavier and uh, than it was before but by the way it's driving or something Okay, my next, my number two is Mr. Monk and the Game Show. Well, what do you like about these episodes? Like, you don't really no, say like, anything well, about what I you like. Well, sometimes I like the mystery. You just say, it's Sometimes about I this like this. the behavior of Monk and you what like he's asked. You like his behavior. What he's asked to do. But you obviously would never like Sharona's behavior. <laughs> well. Because she's such a dipshit. Yeah. <laughs> my number two episode is Mr. Monk and the Game Show. And his ex-father-in-law Trudy's dad has a game show and he believes that the person who one of the contestants who's been winning and winning and winning and winning is um, cheating and uh, the game show host it actually is the game show host murdered his assistant and the contestant was out in the hunting or something, and he found out, and he's blackmailing the game show host, and they had to figure out some kind of a system to cheat. So, like, I think it was, um, <coughs> he had these cards, and it was where he placed his finger on the card, the positioning of it that gave, like, one, per, one part would be B, and one would be A, and one would be C. <coughs> I'm starting to get a dry throat. Anyway, they had this thing where, you know, it was Trudy's parents and... <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. And uh, it was really sweet and sad and and the game. And he also had his neighbor. <coughs> Sharona had to go home to New Jersey for this episode and his upstairs neighbor goes with him, and that was a welcome change. Oh, it was great, because <coughs> his neighbor's actually, he was a better assistant than her. He was really good, and he was very helpful to him, too, and he didn't complain. Um, so that was a really, really good episode. And he also didn't sleep with the bad guy. <coughs> right. He, he, he recognized he did tip off the bad guy, but he didn't know that by saying that Monk was a detective and he'd been asked to come there to see if there was cheating. So that did tip him off, and they were worried that 
you know, they would get caught. Okay, my number one episode, um, <clears throat> now it could have been, it easily could have been the game show one. I yeah, had to and, think and I would, I'm going to accuse you of lying, because I just think that you're doing that, because that's what I did. <coughs> no, I really like this. It was Mr. Monk gets cabin fever, and what happens is some really stupid thing, another OCD thing, where he straightens out an antenna, and he sees somebody kill some other people or other person. I can't re I don't even remember that. That kind of escapes me. And, of course, he's under threat of getting killed himself for seeing this murder. And so he has to hide out in his cabin in the woods. The police detective... <coughs> the police chief comes with him. The um, And Randy, his assistant... Uh, Randy does not come with them at all. No, he doesn't come with them. He comes in at the end. What happens is this girl's been schmoozing him, and she's she's close to the bad guy, and they're trying to figure out through Randy where Monk is staying because they want to kill him, get him out of the way. Well, in the meantime, there's another mystery that just develops an unexpected thing, which makes this really good. In the cabin across the way, a woman murders her husband and tries to make it out that he went, goes fishing in the lake and gets struck by lightning and that that's not true. And so all of that, it's really good. It's probably one of the best mysteries, I think, but just because it's kind of a double mystery. It's and, a multi-layer <clears throat> mystery. Yeah, it's a multi-layer mystery, and that's probably what makes it good because that's very clever, very clever writing. And the um, you have this, I mean, it's very, the woman, the wife, she's stupid. She's really stupid to think she could get away with it, but maybe she would have if Monk hadn't been there because they didn't act very smart about, uh, he'd bought these lures, and he goes out in the lake, and he just bought the lures to use, and he's not using them. He didn't take them with him. He has a special fishing hat. Well, he wasn't even wearing it. And he would have hooked uh, the lures onto his hat, which he didn't even get to do. And, and there were just some other things that uh, they weren't very smart about. The only thing that you did criticize, because <coughs> I watched you watch the episode, mm -hmm. you criticized how... They were drinking out of the creek, out yes, of this that was, gross creek. I forgot about that. That and was something that they I freaked Monk, me out. They tricked Monk into doing it. That and freaked me out. It was like, do they really need to do this? Or it was just, it was gross. Yeah, it, I really don't know. Really gross. They did. They were. They had been walking. They got lost. Monk and the police uh, chief and uh, Sharona. They got lost, and they come upon a spring. I guess it was a spring. And they start drinking the water, and I couldn't believe it. Because, you, I mean, the chances of that being polluted are so high, and uh, they wouldn't know. And But they said they decided to do it anyway, and he wouldn't do it because he thought, you know, he's and he was right, that it would be polluted. But he said that, they said it was from the springs of his favorite uh, water bottle, water, and uh, that it was nearby, and it came from there, and he believed it. And so he drank it all, and it was just like, I almost threw up. I mean, I just really couldn't believe it. It was pretty gross. Like. You could get, I mean, there's so, you could get so many... Oh, that one from uh, American Horror get. Story they talked about. Yes. Giardia. Giardia. You easily get <laughs> Giardia. Uh, and honestly, I, too, they could have taken advantage of that and just had an easy episode after that. They could have had yeah. Mr. Monk gets Giardia. <laughs> no, I, and it, it reminded me when we went to Tanzania and we were by uh, Lake Victoria. Oh, God. And there was these people drinking, and they were poor. Did you? They were, no. They were drinking water out of the lake, and there's this, oh, God, there's this sickness in the lake, or these, oh, God, I don't want to think about it. And it, it, it kills you. ends up killing you, and you could tell some of the people are already sick with it, and I can't think of the name right now, because it's been a long time since I thought about it, but when I saw that spring, 
And then Marco just reminded me how they drank that water. Well, I think you would. Uh, no, though. I wouldn't because the, the sickness is so awful. Oh, God. It's these little... Oh, God. I don't think I just it. got done having salmonella. Yeah. And it's food poisoning and all that giardia. You know, people in... Uh, the other researchers we knew in Tanzania, they got, some of them got Giardia, and it is no fun. It is gross. But according to the gay guys on American Horror Story, they get it all the time, and it's just no big deal. I've never heard of that. And I, I mean, I'm not saying that's not true. They get it all the time. And it is an awful sickness. And it, I mean, you get, it's terrible diarrhea, and I mean, I don't even like you don't even want to know. It's just awful. But no, this it wasn't a uh, Giardia they would get out of Lake Victoria. This was something else. And oh, God, I can't think of the name, but it is so disgusting and awful. And it kills you. So, anyway, this was my favorite ep episode. And uh, But like I said, the game show one was in close competition. So anyway, my take of the season in yeah, terms the, the of food overall would be season. a really good uh, steak with uh, uh, a uh, baked potato and really good vegetable, hopefully maybe asparagus, which I don't know, most of the time we haven't had very good asparagus, but some like really good asparagus. I mean, your review is kind of an afterthought, Sophie, because like... <clears throat> Well, it is, I guess, because we haven't eaten. We got COVID, and and we think we ate soup for days, and. Well, uh, I had to because I had salmonella. Yeah, and it and just. First, uh, I had like. Well, I don't even want to go into details, but I did end up like. I, it, it was weird. It was like, it was like two opposites, one after the other, of what happened, and 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 I had to eat like soup. Because if I ate anything more than that, it would get, uh Yeah, it was just, uh... And even when I ate soup, like, there was that one night where I was watching To Sir With Love. Oh. Where I finished my soup in Jello, and then I threw up my soup bowl. Oh, and God. Then, and then I got up and ran into the bathroom and just puked all over the wall. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Not I over know. the wall, but it just... I I, 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 I wasn't expecting to puke because I it, it didn't feel like it was so weird but it was like the sickness had to come out some way yeah and it, it, it's just uh, my it's just my throat it's still a little bit not too bad anymore but uh, this COVID thing for me it's like this coughing sickness for some reason I just get coughing I get this throat and uh, <clears throat> it's very hard to, and we had this, uh, and it was really good this year, but I could not eat it with pickled herring. It's a sweet. Yeah, why, why didn't you give a pickled herring because of the red herring episode? It was, uh, I didn't well, think it I was that great. It. Well, I liked it, but I couldn't eat it because the pickling made my, irritated my throat, and it just made me cough and cough, and I just didn't need to cough any more than what I was coughing. My I cough, I cough so much my all throat the, hurt. All the Swedish food was terrible, except for the rice pudding. The only thing that was good was when we made salmon the next day, so then we ate that with and it. And that was good. It was mild. That's the best part. But, but it was tasty. And uh, probably I should have said that, but I, yeah, I would love give to salmon. have a, I would love to have a good steak. Yeah, give it salmon. And, uh, yeah. But any, whatever it is, a good, pe a good cut of piece of salmon and well, this was potato. Atlantic salmon too. Yeah. I mean Atlantic salmon is not really good salmon. I marinated it in soy sauce, a bunch of other herbs. I put a bunch of herbs that they said were good <clears throat> for COVID. Yeah any uh, so I've just been uh, I, I, I even right now uh, we have these chips that have uh, they're sour cream and chives or something like that. They're Lay's and they irritate my throat. And I just, it tastes good, but it really, it, I start coughing a bit because I was <laughs> eating those. I just can't, I'm still, uh, just I have a, enough of a problem with the coughing that uh, it's still bothering me a little bit. So 
And that, I, there was one day where you were starting to eat pretzels and oh God. coughing. And I was like, Safi, don't choke like George W. Bush. Yeah, I, but I wasn't choking. It was just, I don't know what it was, but it, it, the pretzel pieces or the dust was irritating my throat. So anyway, I guess I'm lucky because apparently I've talked to some other people. Just today I got a, a card from somebody. I told them we had moved and I, I sent, they, they have their birthday like right on Christmas Eve. You got Christmas a card? Day. Wow. Yeah, and she uh, she and her husband got COVID. She actually used to be my college roommate, uh, senior, junior and senior year. Ooh. And, uh, she and her husband got COVID over New Year's. What did you do in college together? <laughs> Nothing. Did you, did you guys have pizza pockets together? It was together? a cherry. There was no such thing back then. Ooh. So anyway... Uh, apparently a lot of people got COVID for some reason over the holidays because I've heard of some other people who keep popping up and you find out like wow really and I don't know if people who haven't been had COVID the entire time which I never we had never had it here well, it was we so managed fu- to avoid it it was so hilarious when you were starting to get <clears throat> really sick and I forced you to come in here and eat little Debbie snacks <laughs> yeah <laughs> We uh, that was so funny. We all got got, got a sh- at least one. Sh- no wait, the two shot at the beginning, and that was a, we got the basics. And that's that's enough. And that was actually enough because uh, the other person in the house got all the boosters he, yeah, yeah, he, and all he, he, the basics. He got like six thousand shots, and I mean, it, it didn't just, do anything. And they're telling you now to go and get another, just a regular shot. It's like yeah, fuck off. And I'm like, go fuck yourself. Really? And then they've been talking about the booster and the flu shot. And I might, I might still get a flu shot because I get flu terribly bad. And I get miserable. I, you don't want to hear any of that stuff about getting the flu and COVID and all that. Well, it, 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 it's it, just been affecting our lives. It's that, relevant to Monk. It's relevant to Mr. Monk. And you have to admit, Sapi, you are excited for season four. You don't want to watch American yes, Horror Story anymore with the no, sex. No, I don't care about and the, American the Horror Story. People on there. You want to watch American Monk Story. So you want to watch both. You think you're going to watch both? I don't know. Well, we'll see what happens. But uh, the next, because uh, I love watching the show, the Monk Show, because it is so. I like. I both. like the mysteries, even though some of them aren't, aren't as good as the others. But you, you that that's the reason why you have s- at least sixteen episodes, because you uh, you can allow for less than good, really good episodes. You have that allowance there. Yeah. And if you only have six, there is really no, room, no room for, for error. error, and that just isn't right. Yeah, that's not. It's stupid. Fact. You're 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 shooting yourself in the foot. I'm just pissed off though because <clears throat> the last few shows that we've watched, first we did X Files, mm-hmm. they sucked at finales. Yeah. Then we did American Horror, they suck at finales even worse, and then we did or did Monk. And Monk sucks at finales. No, and they I, don't, you don't even know it's a finale. Yeah, I just, That's the thing. I just wish I could watch the, like the next show. I wish I could watch a show with good finales because I feel like if your show doesn't have good finales, it's kind of like one of the reasons why your show isn't a good show. Yeah. Well, this thing with having a six episode season is asinine. I'm sorry. It, well, I lo- I'm looking at the weather app. Looks like we might have snow tomorrow. Which is no good. Well, Safi, you need to stop sniffing the snow. Because I, know ju- what I, I mean. made a sale and I have to go to the post office on Monday. So Tomorrow's I, Sunday. I know that, but. And uh, you know what we're going to do tomorrow, too, Safi? They don't clear this uh, parking lot where we live oh, very that, quickly. Yeah, that's, that's a problem. Well, that that might, but I, I think it'll be fine. But I don't know. We will tomorrow be doing a fan request. Oh. We will be watching Rhinoceros. Mm, interesting. And, and you, you will watch it, Sophie. Oh, that's fine. You're no not going to get out of doing that. I You're not going to slack off again. I'm so. Not... So anyway, goodbye, everybody. Bye bye.